Hello, good people. My name is Doran Chafrier and I am a philosopher. And, you know, once you study philosophy, you really don't have much else to do other than try to follow maybe logical arguments or ideas or stuff like that. So here I am trying to do that over the latest Pierce Morgan debate. I will try to critique the arguments and the logical value of them and show you the process of the debate itself because a couple of really interesting things are happening in there. So here's the thing, I will try not to give too much weight to my opinion of their opinion, but more to their philosophical argument, like how sound is the move that they're making and what is the possible weakness. This is a discussion between Cenk Uyghur and Hassan Musab Yusuf. Both are prominent on the Israel-Palestine issue. They talk a lot on Pierce Morgan's show. Really, if I were to summarize each person's views, you might say, Cenk Uyghur is a pretty far left progressive and he well we'll see the moves the moves that he makes and Hassan Musab Yusuf is an ex Muslim ex Hamas member and he well we will also see the moves that he makes a hugely significant development in this war that Yahya Simwa the architect of October the 7th has been killed but how significant do you think it is it is significant Hassan Nasrallah's assassination was significant Okay, so right off the bat, we see a trick. It's a nice trick that Hassan Musab Yusuf does, and he does it quite often. He was asked a question. He was asked about his opinion of the significance of Yahya Sinwar's assassination. And he, <laughs> he responds, it was significant. Okay, he responds, he answered the question, but then immediately he goes on to talk about something else. In this case, he will talk about Hassan Nasrallah's assassination, and then he will, he will talk about how he thinks that the person who should be assassinated is actually the Ayatollah of Iran, and why Iran is bad, because it's trying to export its uh, Islamic revolution, etc., etc. So the trick here, and it's a nice trick, you answer the question, but you answer like this. And then, you know, you spend so much, so little time answering the question and a lot of other time talking about what you really came here to talk about. The most significant assassination that I'm looking for is the assassination of Ayatollah, the head of the snake. He sent thousands of Iranian children to sweep minefields during the Iraqi-Iranian war. And he gave them keys and he said, this is the key to heaven. Then after that, he sacrificed Gaza children. Right. So again, the trick here was that he wanted to, to be legitimate by answering the question, but he actually wanted to talk about other things like the what the Islamic Republic does and how Islam maybe conceives things. So so he did answer the question, but he didn't really come to answer the question. Like, like that wasn't his intention. His intention was to speak his mind. And it's, it's legitimate, but it's interesting to show. Now, let's see how Cenk does. What I was struck by, by Simwa's uh, death, was that he was hiding in Rafa, which is the very place that Israel have been urged by everyone, including yourself, not to go and attack, not to go into. And yet there is the head of Hamas, there is the person who, who ordered October the 7th, does that not justify Israel's strategy in going in there? No, not at all. I'm going to answer that in a second, Pierce, but... Okay, so again, I need to make this clear because people keep, tend to forget the questions that they were asked or the people were asked. The question was, has it been legitimate for Israel to go into Rafa, given that it did find Yahya Sinwar in Rafa, after most of the world to told them, listen, you don't, don't go into Rafa, it's bad that if you went into Rafa, etc., etc. So Cenk's answer was no, like no, they were not justified to go into Rafa. And then he moves on to talk about something else. He says, I'll get back to th the answer is no, I'll get back to that. Now let me talk about something else. So we, we see our two guests acting quite similarly so far. They're spending very little time answering a question and then moving on to talk about the other things that they really want to say, maybe the talking points that they have prepared ahead of schedule. Now, uh, let's see if Cenk does go back to answering the question with more detail. It's a really important question about does the end of 
the Ayah Senwar and Hasran Nasrallah mean that this should come to a close? That's the central question. And here, they have no more targets left. All of Hamas leaders are dead. All of Hezbollah's leaders are dead. In fact, Israel just bragged that they killed the whole new set of leadership of Hezbollah. So that's an entirely different point. What he does here is, instead of just going on a tangent, he asks a different question. Like, Pierce asked him a question, and then Cenk answers, no, and I'll get back to that. But now let me ask another ask a question, and then I'll answer the question that I've asked. So basically, it's like pre-prepared talking points. Like he asked a new question. His new question is, is it justifiable for Israel to keep pursuing the war, given that it has eliminated well, Yahya Sinwar and Hassan Nasrallah and all that? So that's not, he wasn't asked that, but he gives the impression that he's answering a question that he was asked, but he actually was never asked this question. He's the person who asked himself that question. Nothing to do with, oh my God, we're going to get Yahya yeah, Sinwar. In fact, the Israeli intelligence is excellent. As you can see, they blew up the walkie-talkies, the pagers, etc. They knew where Sinwar was all, the whole time. It, it was an accident, as Musa just explained, because they didn't want to kill him because he was an excuse. The hostage deal has been on the table since July 2nd. Israel's not taking it. Why? They want to use it as an excuse to absolutely annihilate northern Gaza and retake it. They're doing this week, past weekend, Netanyahu's party, Likud, did a seminar on how to resettle Gaza. This is... All okay, that, that has nothing to do with what he was asked. So, well, I guess it kind of does because if he's using all these arguments to basically try and claim that Israel's entire stated war aim of maybe, you know, removing Hamas from power, he states that it's not Israel's real war goal. The real war goal is, I don't know, the extermination of Gazans and the occupation of land and the settlement of Gaza and whatever. So I guess in this sense, it is philosophically consistent because he rejects the premise of the question. He says, look, your, your whole framing is wrong. The true framing is that Israel is not interested in removing Hamas. So that is kind of philosophically consistent and sound, I could say. But well, you, you have to accept a lot of premises to accept his uh, worldview. If, if after 9-11, America had discovered that bin Laden was hiding in a particular place, as they did many, many years later, but had they discovered it within a year, and they had attacked that place and taken him out, then most people would have said that was reasonable, responsive military action, wouldn't they? What's the difference? Morally, yeah. between, between so, well, I mean, just, just to be clear, nobody disputes that Sinwar orchestrated and ordered October the 7th. So if he is the mastermind right. behind this heinous terror attack, then using the parallel of 9-11, is that not just justification? If that had been bin Laden, would anyone be having too many moral qualms about going after yeah. him and killing him? So Pierce noticed that Cenk didn't answer his question. He tries to put it differently. The thing he said here is, again, the same thing. He's asking, should Israel have gone into Rafah, right? Given that Yahya Sinwar was in Rafah, was it fair for Israel to go in there? And let's see if Cenk answers this time. Because last time, I remind you, he answered no. He said, I'll get back to that. And then he, he went on to basically say what he, just, what he came here to say. So let's see if he answers this time. No, Piers is a great example, but I reject your framing. So let me explain. So bin Laden, we didn't get. We did get. And where did we, how did we get him? We got him through special forces. And if you remember, a year ago when I was on this program, you said, what should Israel do? And I said, special forces. This is indeed an argument that Cenk has made for a long time now that Israel should be sending special forces to deal with Hamas. Now, here's the thing. Logically speaking, like in imagination land, you could see how this argument works and it's consistent because he, you say, well, they do have to pay. Israel should get the terrorists. They should get the bad guys. So the solution is to send like a special force that only gets the bad guys or something like that. But here's the thing. Anyone who knows anything about warfare in the region would know that that is pretty much impossible. Because once you have embedded a combatant force inside of civilian population, it really becomes quite impossible to, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to send like a hundred troops into Gaza or 
a thousand troops and they're going to what go house by house and look for evidence like detectives and i mean how is it going to work it's but it is it is philosophically sound it's it's just kind of weird right I mean, just because something is logically sound doesn't mean that it works in reality the nazis for example had entire textbooks about uh, eugenics and about race and about the purity of the aryans that you, you can build upon the argument and, and the premises of eugenics and you can really make a whole body of literature around it but if it's based on nonsense just be, just the fact that it's valid doesn't mean that it's worth anything it killed 42,000 people in Gaza over 30,000 women and children and then they've now killed over 2,000 in Lebanon and they're saying oh we're not the terrorists Yahya Sinwar is because we accidentally killed 30,000 women and children, slaughtered them, and oftentimes with headshots. So, Piers, let me ask you something. If it's legitimate to kill over 30,000 civilians while you're trying to get one terrorist, and Netanyahu's 30, 40 times the terrorist Sinwar is, by your logic, you're saying it's okay to kill 30, 40,000 innocent Israelis just to get Netanyahu. No, I would, I would throw back at you a different question, which is how many people did the allies, including obviously led by America, but also UK troops and others, how many did they kill in Afghanistan before they ended up killing bin Laden? So there is so much here. Like, I need to explain a concept called utilitarianism for a moment. Utilitarianism is the idea that morality is measured by utility versus suffering or something like that you could take it in a couple of different ways but i'll try to explain it simply what chenk is trying to do is trying to put forth a utilitarian argument in which forty thousand people dying is basically equivalent to forty thousand people dying for any other reason so for example if gaza basically the governing body of gaza started a war with israel and they had 40,000 people die in that war, and Israel had less people die in that war, that instantly makes a, a moral case in favor of stopping the killing in Gaza, because 40,000 people dying is a lot more than the people who died in Israel. So that means that it would be a net moral good for Israel to stop the war, right? So that's a purely utilitarian argument. A response to such an argument could be something like intentions matter, right? Like who started the war? What, is, what does Israel need to achieve for long-term security? Whose, whose interests should Israel have in mind? Should, should it care more about the Israelis who are dying or more about the Gazans who are dying? So th th these are some potential questions that could be asked of a utilitarian, but it, it's a pretty solid, like it's an easy talking point, right? Because it's a, it's a disparity in casualties and it's easy to see. So it's easy to put forth the utilitarian uh, viewpoint if you indeed want to argue against Israel. And Pierce's response here, by the way, it kind of doesn't fall for that. He goes back to the special forces part because Cenk kind of says, well, the Americans got bin Laden with special forces. But Pierce asks, well, you wouldn't send special forces into Afghanistan before, you know, before the war. Like you can't, you wouldn't have, instead of bombing Afghanistan or doing whatever, send, I don't know, a bunch of SEALs to go look for bin Laden, right? It's crazy. I mean, again, it's, it's, it, it works on the philosophical level, but in reality, it's, it's complete fiction. It, it depends how you frame what Hamas and Hezbollah have been doing for the last two or three decades. You know, to many people where they come from, they are a form of resistance. To many people outside of the region, they're terrorists. But clearly, a lot of people in the Palestinian world believe that Hamas and Hezbollah are not terrorists, but are essentially a form of freedom fighter. What do you say to that? Listen, killing, looting, raping, kidnapping are not forms of resistance. Okay, so Mossad actually answers the question. The question was, is it resistance, right? Because some people see it as resistance and some don't. And Mossad's answer is, no, it's not resistance because these actions are not resistance. Now let's see if he does what he did in the previous times and then go, just goes on to talk about his prepared talking points because I saw him writing down something with a pen while Cenk was speaking. So let's see if he does something about that. But what so-called Palestinians 
And it has never been a fight over land. It's a religious fight that started some 1400 years ago. It's motivated by great hatred against the Jewish people. So he does the classic move of making it about Islam and making it like a, framing it as a religious struggle of Islam versus Judaism or Islam versus the infidel. Again, I'm, I'm not rating my opinion of his opinion here. I'm just showing that again, like last time, he answers the question and then he goes on to talk about something else that's important to him that he wants to get across. As we empower Hamas, more children are going to die. And if we don't remove Hamas from power, if we don't remove the uh, Ayatollah from power, then this endless and vicious cycle of violence will continue for eternity. It's as simple as that. He just goes back to his, the, the point that he first made about having to remove the Islamic Republic of Iran, basically having them, the, the terrorists embed themselves and use human shields and uh, indoctrinate in the, the children and have the children die, basically uh, having it serve its purposes. So that's, that's the point. It's the same thing he said at the start of the show, and it's the same thing that he said in the past. Palestinian is a syndrome. It's a mental illness. It's a universal phenomena. And Jeng is the perfect example. And if he gets hungry eventually, I will not be surprised that he will eat his own children. Well, what, what can you say? Well, obviously, it's a rhetorical tool. It has no philosophical or logical value. But of course, what he's driving at is that the Palestinian culture, that's his claim that it, it devours its children by basically teaching them the Palestinian identity and, and so-called resistance against the Jews, the Israelis. Okay, so you would like me to respond to a guy who just escaped from a mental asylum. Okay, he calls me a Palestinian. You Look, are the one who should I'm go not... to a mental asylum. Okay, if, if he... Looks like I should skip ahead a little bit. They're doing a lot more than throwing rocks. Hezbollah's been firing yeah, rocket after rocket after rocket, rocket at all. after rocket. Hamas has been launching terror attacks. The Houthis have been firing rockets. The Iranians are funding it all. It's not just rock throwing, Cenk, is it? Okay, Piers, Piers, you're making it sound, this is the frame of all Western media, that the Palestinians and the Arabs and the Muslims are so strong, they're about to wipe out poor little Israel. Cenk is making an argument here about how, well, the Arabs, basically, the, those fighting Israel, don't really harm Israel that much. You know, they fire a bunch of rockets and the rockets don't really hit anything. And well, you know, a person dies once in a while. That goes back to the utilitarian viewpoint, right? Because if, if you ad fully adopt a utilitarian viewpoint in which all you do is count heads, then it's immoral to have Israel continue the war, right? Because not so many Israelis are dying and many Arabs are dying. So Israel must be in the wrong. If I am, if I am purely viewing the world through a utilitarian lens in which I am trying to minimize suffering and maximize happiness, then of course it will be easy for Cenk to say there's a lot more suffering on the Arab side and a lot less suffering on the Israeli side. I mean, Israelis, you know, a person gets killed once in a while and a few rockets get thrown at them, but these rockets miss, while on the other side Israel is bombing and, and it's not really missing and it's destroying the entire place. So util utility-wise, Israel is the bad guy, of course. It's a very comfortable viewpoint for anti-Israel people to adopt because it works. It works. This viewpoint has certain many weaknesses. I am not a utilitarian, but some people are. How do you not see, conversely, that what happened on October the 7th was to Jewish people not dissimilar to what the Nazis did to them in World War II? How do you not see that? It is not similar at all. It is. At all, Piers. It is. It is. No. A, is he going to say that it's not similar at all because of utilitarian reasons, like because of the scale and because of the ability of the other side? Let's see if he does that. Group wedded to no, the destruction Piers, of all it's Jewish... it's insanity. Let me finish Stop my saying question. The same things. It is a group wedded, in the case of the Nazis, to the eradication of all Jewish people, as indeed are Hamas. What's the difference? October 7th can be terrible, but at the same time, you can acknowledge the power dynamic of who is stronger and who is not. Why does that make a difference? Because the Nazis were the more powerful force. They had every ability to wipe out the Jews, and they tried. Right, so it's a utilitarian viewpoint, right? The, the answer is that 
Ham uh, the Nazis did <laughs> wipe out European Jewry and Hamas didn't. That's kind of the, the argument here, right? The, like, okay, so utilitarianism, it's all, also what you would call a consequentialist worldview. It means that what matters are the consequences, not the intentions. If you've maximized pain, that's a bad thing. If you've maximized well-being, that's a good thing. Your intentions, they don't matter at all. So essentially, he's, he's being consistent. Cenk is being consistent here. It's just, I think, a weak view. We could criticize it from other directions, which we're not going to do here, but I guess it kind of works, right? I mean, you have to put on a very special pair of glasses to view the world through this lens alone for this to work, but it could work. Who authorized you to speak on behalf of the Arab children of Gaza? Who authorized you? You just did. You, you never me a been there. You don't care. So my Palestinian And now or am I you not? think you hold the higher moral ground. You don't. I do. You are not the savior. You always need a victim in order to pose as the savior. You are not the savior. It's a big situation in Gaza. All of us are heartbroken for the death of the children of Gaza. All of us. That includes Israel. Israel considers what's happening in Gaza a tragedy. So this argument, Mossab loves this statement at Cenk, but basically, according to what we've just seen, Cenk is supposed to be immune to such an argument. Why? Because Cenk doesn't care about intentions. He's a utilitarian. He cares about consequences. So saying that the Israelis are heartbroken by what's happening in Gaza basically doesn't hold any meaning for a utilitarian because he would say something like, look, you know, you can, <laughs> if you're crying while you're killing everyone who like your tears don't do any, any good to anyone. And that works from a utilitarian viewpoint that totally works. Also what Musab tries to do here, he is, he, well, he kind of states the Cenk has never been there, he doesn't know anything about it, which kind of, you know, it could work. It also implies that because Mossab is from the Israel, basically the Palestinian territories, he knows better. So that, you know, that's a little jab in there. You know who's fighting for the children of Gaza? The IDF that is killing Hamas. <laughs> That is uprooting Hamas so the children of Gaza can have their freedom after 36 years of slavery. Those are the ones who qualify to speak on the topic, not you sitting in your comfort. Musa Yusuf basically comes from a worldview that Hamas is bad for the Arabs of Israel, for the Palestinians. He, he calls them Palestinian in quotes, but this is his worldview. So for from his perspective, Israel is doing a service to the children of Gaza by dismantling Hamas. This is what he hopes to achieve. This is what he always talks about. Cenk, of course, uh, doesn't buy it at all. They have a severe, well, they view the world completely differently in this manner, so they can't really communicate on the same plane here because for Cenk, Hamas and basically the Palestinian resistance is the natural effect of occupation. So, for example, According to Cenk's worldview, any people who would be occupied in the same way that Israel occupies the Palestinians would develop Hamas-like cells. Whereas for Mas um, Hassan Yusuf, these guys are, well, they're basically the reason that they're acting like this is because A, they're Islamists and B, they're like infected with a mind virus that causes them to see themselves as this made up Palestinian thing, right? So him and Cenk can't really communicate on the same plane. They're speaking in completely different terms. I guess this show is meant to be entertaining, right? So that works for entertainment. That's why he comes out here and says absurd things like Palestinians don't exist. Why is he they not allowed no to, to, why is he not allowed to renounce and disown Hamas? All right, I think I've had about enough of this. So <laughs> this was my critique of this debate. I hope you guys liked it. You can feel free to send me anything else that you'd like me to critique. Ideally, something shorter than this. But uh, thank you so much. Have a good day. Be good people.